by Clay Tucker, who is pushed out of bounds by Torian Jones, and that's his first foul. Well, this is pretty savvy play by Clay Tucker. If they're going for the ball, if Tucker doesn't go after it, he gets pushed. The officials don't call it. But once the hand was on his back, he decided, let me go get it, fall out of bounds, and get the call. So that's a senior making a decision there, and a good one. How about that? Notre Dame over the limit. So Clay Tucker had 40 points against Wright State this year. He's out of 36 and a 28. Misses the front end of the one and one, goes out of bounds, and it's off the head of Stone. Here's a three point. Milwaukee 0 for 2, at least here in Indianapolis, has been a problem. The lower seeds have had opportunities to win, but free throw shooting has really cost them. Jones couldn't go up and under. Tucker with the rebound. Notre Dame by four. Tucker for three. Tipped up by Sanders, though. He gets his own rebound. Here's Frederick for three. And Dan Miller with the board. Leads on the break. Poked away from behind and kicked out of bounds. 2016, Notre Dame leads Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it's been an ugly first half. And I'm sure the Panthers from Milwaukee will take it. Down by four. Well, Wisconsin, Milwaukee didn't expect to paint a masterpiece. They wanted to make this one an abstract. They want to make it as <laughs> ugly as they can because it plays to their benefit. They want a ragged game, wear Notre Dame down, push the ball, and create foul opportunities. Tucker fouled his third. Rather, Jones picking up his third. Well, one of the things that's negated the pressure of Wisconsin-Milwaukee has been the sterling play of Corinne Francis inside. Again, showing some strength on the board. What Notre Dame has needed is physical presence in the paint. That's been the well spring of their woes, particularly on the defensive end, over the last 10 games where they lost 6 out of 10. They've been giving up too many points in the paint. Corinne Francis has come today both on the offense and defensive end and really been an anchor. Clay Tucker gets the first one to go, a 68% free throw shooter. Don't forget the winner of this game takes on Illinois, who defeated Western Kentucky. D fast break Brown, almost a triple-double. And you know what? When he got under control, some of the same things were looking at Chris Thomas and criticizing a bit. When, when D. Brown finally got under control, distributed, picked his points in time for shots, he was downright dominant. Miller ripped one from three-point range. 23-18. Tucker trying to answer, fires a brick. And Notre Dame will pull it out. Matt Carroll back into the game for N.D. Playing with two fouls. Thomas taking bait, leans in. Got it! Oh, it rims out. That one looked to be halfway down. You know, you can't count it until the twine twinkle, man. <laughs> <laughs> but again, a nice job. Watch him stop here, pump fake. And that's the Chris Thomas, again, savvy point guard. He understands the offensive element of this game. And he's got to make sure that they respect him as an offensive threat. But having said that, he doesn't need to come down two, three, four consecutive possessions and shoot the ball. He needs to be able to start distributing the guys because he is a threat. Don't forget, coming up, Pulse the Dayton will get you there shortly. For those of you expecting to see that game, Chris Thomas gets a pair of free throws. 3.44 to go. Notre Dame up. Notre Dame up 25-18 with 3.44 to go in the first half. They struggled early, but since uh, started to turn it on a little bit. Well, Wisconsin-Milwaukee's having a lot of difficulty with their big three guys, Dylan Page, Clay Tucker, and Ronnie Jones, all double-figure scorers, but collectively they're 5 of 19. A lot of them are long shots, a lot of them are ill-advised shots. But remember, Bruce Pearl told us he doesn't mind if his team goes down early in the game because they've been down many times before as much as 16 in some instances and have made up those deficits. Dylan Page, the jump hook inside. It's all about changing the tempo, getting the other team off balance and out of sorts until his team can kind of 
regroup and find their offensive touch. Forgot to mention that Chris Thomas is home. He is a native of Indianapolis, went to Pike High School, Mr. Basketball in the state. As a matter of fact, he's the first Mr. Basketball from Indiana to go to Notre Dame. Here comes the Panthers. Thomas going after the ball. Sucker throwing elbows. And timeout. 240 remaining in the first half. Back after this. Coming up on Singular at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores and highlights, plus a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. That's all coming up on Singular at the half. You think Greg and Clark have some hats like that? Green? Huh? I don't know. I've seen Greg's wardrobe. I don't think so. But Clark... <laughs> No, nah, just kidding. Clark is always <laughs> sectorially splendid. <laughs> Sucker around the screen offense is the call. Nice job by Quinn sliding in and taking the charge. Again, Wisconsin-Milwaukee now a little bit out of control, essentially trying to force the issue on this tempo. And it's interesting, Gut, for all the health of Skelter, all the creation of turnovers and pushing the ball, Wisconsin Milwaukee doesn't have one fast break point. A lot of that is because they haven't been able to finish. They've gotten layup opportunities, haven't been able to put them down. Inside Francis Knight pass, and he draws the foul. Great job by Chris Thomas. And he is playing under control today. Well, he's doing exactly what Mike Bray wanted him to, manage the game. Pick your spots, but make sure that everybody gets involved. He sees there's a great mismatch in Notre Dame's favor down low. Francis is at his way with the Panthers. 9.7 rebounds in the first half. Also a block shot as the free throw. Ren Francis is from Roslindale, Massachusetts. And in high school, you know what he did? He was the sports editor of his high school paper. Wrote tons of articles. Think you got a few headlines? <laughs> I don't think you can write about yourself. Why not? <laughs> Says who? I don't, I, for some reason, I think that goes against the journalistic code. And hey, maybe news, I'm wrong. News is news. Tucker jamming it down from Frederick on the alley-oop. Touch the Notre Dame lead to seven. And that's good news for Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Finally got an opportunity to finish on a layup. Thomas blowing it down. Here's the high pick and roll with Miller. Thomas breaking his man down off the dribble. Now Miller. Spinning. Leaning. Tough shot. Carroll brought to the ground. Frederick picks it up. Oh, that was pretty good defense right there by Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And then they turn it over. Clay Tucker this time gets advantage, gets beyond his man. And look at the pass right on the money. Throw it right in front of the rim. Let your athletes go get it. Tucker couldn't hold on. 8.3 rebounds in the first half. Milwaukee with eight turnovers, coupled with the fact they're shooting 28% from the field. Eight of 29. But if I'm Bruce Pearl, I'm not that worried if my team is accustomed to playing at this pace. You just want them to maximize the opportunities that we said about Notre Dame. When you get layups, make them. And Thomas called for the foul. He turned it over on one end, and that's kind of a frustration foul. Well, that sends Ronnie Jones to the line. Milwaukee in the double bonus. Two shots for Ronnie Jones. 
be a part of the madness as Coca-Cola presents the Late Late Show with Greg Gilborn in New Orleans. It's a week of March Madness direct from the Big Easy. Beginning March 31st right here on CBS, America's most watched network. I think Greg was a basketball player in college somewhere up in Minnesota. Big guy. That's what he tells us. <laughs> I think Craig was on the team. <laughs> that means you're a player. 27-22, here's Miller. Holds it back. Thomas. Dribble drive and lean. And gets it to go. And the foul. And see, it's in those open floor opportunities where the floor is spread. And Chris Thomas has a lot of room to work that he can get things done. Look at the spread floor situation on the wings. And a nice ball fake right there. It gets the defense out of position. That's what it's all about. And then you make something happen. Chris Thomas, what a nice kid. Great personality. He'll give you a hard time. He'll give you a close haircut. Yes, he will. He came Hello? over and asked us if, he, if we wanted to get some shape up. I was going to say, though, those, those are the easy ones. I'm sure he's got some style <laughs> in his clippers. 29-22. A minute to play in the first half. Dylan Page across the lane. Great job. And again, Wisconsin Milwaukee has to go back to that. They've got to get a good mix of perimeter game and post game. Dan Miller misses the layup. I mean, there was nobody next to him. I don't know if he just didn't realize where he was on the floor. Another missed opportunity. With a double team, Page. We side Jones for three. Down it. Here come the Panthers. Time out, Irish. And this is what Bruce Pro was talking about. Doesn't mind getting down because he knows they can come back. Pearl, the head coach of the Milwaukee Panthers in the middle. His team has scored five points in 21 seconds, and he told us yesterday, we can get down by 15 or 16, but we have the confidence to know we can come back. And certainly, again, his goal is to continue to play this tempo because he believes that Notre Dame will ultimately will. He's playing this game as if it's a long-distance run instead of a sprint. Maybe a marathon? I don't want to go that far. This is our <laughs> last game of the night. I don't think I can deal with a marathon. <laughs> and here's the turnover. Wise with the steal. Two seconds inside. Let's move. to Milwaukee. What a huge play for Wisconsin Milwaukee. Look at the clock on the right side on the fast break. And again, a terrific job of recognizing the open floor. And there you go with the layup. Now let's go to Solomon Wilcox. Coach, in four of your last five games, you've allowed 45 or more points in the first half, so you have to really be happy with the defensive effort your team has put in. I think regarding tonight, uh, our offense hurt us the last three minutes of the first half, and uh, we just got to slow down on the offensive end. Okay, thanks, Coach. Back to you, Gus. All right, Notre Dame turned it over 14 times in the first half as Milwaukee finishes with an 11-2 run. Handle that ball. You got to squeeze it. They're not taking care of it. Give Wisconsin Milwaukee some credit, but a lot of it is self inflicted. Notre Dame has to do a better job of handling the ball because when they do, they get good shots. All right, Clark. Me. Full championship. He's sponsored by Anger Management. UPS. Capital One. And by Pontiac. Welcome back. We are tied at 29 at halftime. Milwaukee and Notre Dame. Gus Johnson, Glenn Elmore. Wow. I mean, Milwaukee went on a furious run at the end of that first half. Well, the helter-skelter pace has really had impact, particularly on the shooting for both teams. They included in those percentages a one for six from three point for Notre Dame and three for 11 for Wisconsin Milwaukee. They're also holding their own Wisconsin Milwaukee on the board. But it's the turnover that's really hurting Notre Dame. They've lost some opportunity to build a lead. Take a look at the leading scorers in the first half. Blake Tucker with nine and Francis with 11 to go along with seven rebounds. 
So if you're Notre Dame and you know how this Milwaukee team plays now, what do you do? Well, if I'm Mike Gray, actually, I try to pressure a little bit of my own, again, to try to slow the pace. The press can be used to turn people over, to wear people down, and also to slow the pace a little bit, force people to be more deliberate in bringing the ball up. Dylan Page off the mark. First shot of the second half for the Panthers. And the other way that you can slow the pace is to put the ball in the basket. Without Matt Carroll, who averages 20 a game, scoreless in the first half for the Irish. In nine minutes, he got in foul trouble. Here's Carroll to kick out Miller. Short. And a rebound going to the Panthers. Nate Milky pulling it down. Page on the baseline. Inside, Milky jump hook. Got it. Oh, great interior passing there. Dylan Page drew the defenders, and Milky just followed up like a good offside rebounder should. Francis has it to lock right into the hands of Thomas. He can't lay it in, but somehow he picked it up and in. Well, again, that's Chris Thomas playing in front of the home folks. He's not going to be denied. He told us that during his high school career, he was 3-0 and on this floor. Good sequence of Chris Thomas right here. Tries to force it against the big guys, but stays on the floor. And again, look at him. He's down there battling guys with five, six-inch height advantages and still getting it done. But his greatest value is going to be out on the floor, trying to find ways to get Matt Carroll loose, to get Dan Miller in position where he can bury some shots. Chris Thomas only has one assist. And Matt Carroll just picked up his third foul. As Frederick knocks down the free throw. So Dan Miller, that man there, has to step up. He got his chin patched up during the halftime session. Second one good. There's some full court pressure by Wisconsin Milwaukee. Kind of caught Notre Dame off guard. And again, Bruce Pearl continuing with his game plan to keep Notre Dame off balance. Change defenses, apply pressure, pull back a little bit. Here's Thomas, lead pass to Francis. Watch out. Oh, there you go. The Irish. That's just a nice job by Chris Thomas that time. In the crowd, didn't turn it over, found his man. Ties it up at 33. Milky, jump hook. And air ball. Francis another rebound. Now Matt Carroll. Looking for his first point of the game. And Carroll twists his ankle. He is hobbling on that ankle, a left ankle. Thomas. Baseline jump shot. Too strong. Francis has two hands on it, but can't hold on. And Matt Carroll is in a lot of pain. Frederick. And a foul. And Matt Carroll twisted that ankle on their last trip down the floor. And Notre Dame's got to be very careful now. Tom Timmerman and some of the other frontline guys getting very frustrated with the physical play of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And of course, when their guy gets hurt, that's another reason. Take a look right here. The right side of your screen, Matt Carroll now out of the picture had stepped on a player's foot and he's really in pain. Meanwhile, Dylan Page at the line. Page is at seven points rather on three of eight shooting. The point I was going to make before we took a look at how Matt Carroll injured himself was the fact that frustration is setting in. Fouls occur. The Irish front line guys are barking at the officials. They can't defocus right now. They've got to maintain their focus, particularly inside on the defensive end as well as getting to the basket. And there, they don't even make themselves available. Notre Dame having a hard time getting the ball up the floor. Milwaukee by two. In our first game, Travis Steiner had a career-high 29 as Marquette beat Holy Cross. Our second game, Southern Illinois had a chance to win it at the end. However, they lost it 72-71 to Missouri, and Illinois behind that great Brown. D. Brown 
They won their game 65 to 60. Bill self team hanging on to win it. Over Western Kentucky. Here's Dan Miller around the screen, cut off nicely by Dylan Page. Inside Francis forces it up and draws the foul. Milky got him. And that's been there all night for Turin Francis. It's the pressure on the perimeter that's prevented the guards from getting the ball into him more frequently. Turin Francis, 13 points, 9 rebounds. 3 of 4 from the free throw line. And the first one is good. And we had a chance to see a guy that played at Notre Dame last year. A pretty good ball player now playing professional basketball, Ryan Humphrey. Yeah, Ryan Humphrey, first round draft pick. You know, all big East last year. A tremendous guy, not only inside, but mostly on the perimeter with size and strength. And you were saying he was a pretty good football player. Too. Oh, out of Booker T. Washington High School in Tulsa. Matt Carroll back in the game. He's still limping. He averages 21 a game, and he has not scored a point tonight. It'll be interesting to see if they recognize that he's guarding Clay Tucker, the leading scorer, and if they go to him. And Page has it knocked out of his hand with a foul call. Let's see who that one's on. If it's Carroll, it's his fourth. And if I'm Clay Tucker, I'm telling folks, hey, the guy's got a gimpy ankle. Go Get at him. me the ball. That's right. Get me the ball. Chris Thomas called for a second foul. Here's Page. Dylan Page has really been strong inside tonight, Lenny. Well, he has been on the offensive end. Obviously, defensively, he and Milky have had a difficult time with Turin Francis. But Page turns and faces nicely, and that makes it difficult for big guys to guard him. They don't like to go out on the perimeter and guard guys who can put it on the floor. Dylan with 10. And Jordan Cornette enters the game. Chris Quinn takes a seat. And a foul before the ball was thrown in bounds. And that's Jose Winston fouling Chris Thomas. Here's the tournament summary. The Pac-10, perfect. The Big 12, perfect. Conference USA, struggling a little bit. And the Big 10, perfect. Central Michigan, how about that? Out of the MAC. Beating Creighton. That's the upset of the day thus far. Yeah, but when you look at it, it's still two mid-majors playing against each other. It wasn't that, you know, David and Goliath mentality there. And maybe that's what allowed Creighton to lose a little bit of an edge. But half off to the Chippewas. They did something I didn't think they could do. As for Milwaukee, David's got the slingshot ready right here as Matt Carroll finally hits a shot to tie it at 37. And that's his shot going baseline. Tucker in and out. Rebounded by Carroll, but he traveled. And that's probably because that ankle is hard to plan on right there. But Matt Carroll does a nice job putting it on the floor. This is the difference between Matt Carroll this year, all Big East, 20-point-per-game guy, and Matt Carroll of the past, his ability to put it on the floor and create for himself. And it's obviously gotten harder with that bad ankle. Took Matt Carroll 23 minutes to get on the board. Game tied at 37. Dan Miller now switched to Clay Tucker. Good adjustment by Notre Dame. But even Ronnie Jones has the ability to take Matt Carroll off the dribble if he chose to. Reversal, Ronnie Jones. Dan Miller going up high and pulling it down. Instead of taking him off the dribble, dribble Jones settles for the jump shot. That's not playing smart. Here's Thomas, under control the entire game. Carroll, looking for his offense now. He's got a smaller man on him. He was hoping to be able to back him down. Thomas, foul. Oh, no, they don't say it's a foul. It's a partial block. And Milwaukee knocks it out of bounds. 15-57 to go, second half. 37 apiece. Up at 37. Our final game of the night in Indianapolis. Gus Johnson along with Lynn Elmore. Martin, you're hanging in there pretty good. Hey, that's a great while. There. That's, what, that's what keeps you going, man. It's competition. 
in the anticipation of something big happening. Cornette inside to Francis. Miller frees himself to the basket. Beautiful finger roll. And that was excellent ball movement. Probably the best of this game for Notre Dame. Finally able to spread the floor, move the ball where they need to, and splash to the hole. Tucker on the baseline, and a cut foul called against Matt Carroll, and that is his fourth. And that's what happens. You got that gimpy ankle, you slow to half a step. You got to put hands on to slow the ball handler down. Tucker, nice job recognizing who was guarding him and taking advantage. Well, here's something interesting. Carroll picks up his fourth, and Coach is going to let him stay in the game. Well, obviously, he's a senior. He knows how to play in foul trouble. Plus, if you take him out now, does that ankle stiffen up where you don't have any other use for him again? Lettenberger, Frederick in the corner. Off the mark, rebounded by Miller. Finally, Jones comes up with the ball now. Miller. Milwaukee, Wisconsin and Milwaukee doing a nice job of jumping the rebound, and so Notre Dame can't start their fast break. Slow the outlet pass, let you guys get back on deep. Carroll straight away. Fourteen forty-six to go in the second half. Notre Dame has struggled. They turned it over. Their best player, Matt Carroll, has two points in 24 minutes. The average is 21, but the Irish lead it by two over Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Well, Wisconsin-Milwaukee is getting the job done primarily because they have made this a track meet for the most part. They've gotten up and down, forced Notre Dame to play their pace. When Notre Dame is able to gain control of the tempo, run their half-court set, spread the floor, get Chris Thomas open, let him create, give other guys opportunities from the wing, then they're okay. Defensively, they've had a hard time staying with a number of guys from Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and that's why they find themselves with only a two-point lead. Dan Miller, nice bounce pass. Francis hammers it down. Textbook way to break the press by Notre Dame. Francis with 17 points and nine rebounds. Jones up top. He babied it. Rebounded though by Lettenberger. The Jones again, this time in the basket. High percentage shot. That was a good play on by the officials. Francis standing underneath the basket, not in legitimate defensive position. Chris Thomas the other way. Leads in the finger roll. Holy Toledo. Chris Thomas with the George Gervin S. Finger roll. 43 to 39. And when you talk with Mike Gray, that's why he doesn't rein Chris Thomas in. Because then he becomes tentative. You won't get great plays like that. Get their people in place and execute. Chris Thomas with 16 points. Make it 17. And the Irish take a seven-point lead. But they led by as many as eight in the first half and milwaukee reeled them in notre dame on an 11 2 run and a foul called inside cornette a little too physical with page defense has a bounce in its step guys coming out extending wisconsin milwaukee uses that aggressiveness against them look at the help come over nice dish off there and again a nice job by jones to draw the defense torian jones off for his fourth and page sinks the first free throw he's five for five from the line Chris Quinn into the game. Torian Jones at the bench. 
or during this run it's probably been some of Notre Dame's best basketball but you know they keep looking in the rearview mirror saying who are these guys and Notre Dame almost turned it over Chris Quinn hustling the Milwaukee fans didn't like that call at all but the official was standing right on the play Irish by six Fadeaway jumper. Down it. 48 40. He has 19. Jones. He's fouled. And he may have stepped on a foot. Talk about how important Chris Thomas is. Take a look again. The difference in the wins and losses. He's the barometer for Notre Dame. When he's good, they're good. When he's off his game, they struggle. And right now, for this stretch at least, Chris Thomas is at the mountaintop. 19 points for Chris. And Ronnie Jones sinks the first. Gets a pair. Six point lead, four four pressure by Milwaukee. And Miller with patience walks it up the floor. Nice job by the big guard, Dan Miller. Confidence in his handle, body travels. Got over the line, and Jose Winston kept making him change direction. And he finally shuffled his feet. Well, you talk about perseverance. Dan Miller got the ball over half court, fine. Jose Winston could have just quit and say, okay, fine, I don't have to worry about a 10-second call. But he stayed with it. He dogged Dan Miller and forced that turnover. So here come the Panthers from Milwaukee. Winston along with Ronnie Jones. Nate Milky, Page, and Clay Sucker. And Cornette calls for a foul once again. So there's a lot of movement. Wisconsin Milwaukee screening across, getting back screens. Takes an awful lot of communication, awful lot of anticipation by the defense to avoid that and you can't use your hands because obviously the officials are looking for that. Cornette reaching out, bumping, trying to stay with his man is getting caught. Second foul on Cornette. There's the free throw shooting. Milwaukee, 13 of 16. That's a great percentage. Notre Dame, they've only missed two. And here's Dylan Page, 11 points, five of six from the free throw line. Shooting one and one. And on a day like today where the three lower seeds all had a chance to win but had problems on the free throw line, Wisconsin-Milwaukee has got to get that put them down. Live telecast of the NCAA men's tournament games available now online, on demand, over the Internet. To find out more, go to NCAAsports.com. Page missing the second. Five-point lead for the Irish. And eternity left to play. Thomas cut off and a foul. Eleven thirty-two to go. Timeout on the floor. Back after this. Down year for Notre Dame. Well, it certainly has, and. You got to expect some of that because they play in the Big East Conference. You got some tough teams there like Syracuse and Pittsburgh. So you're going to rise and fall in the polls. But that latest drop had a lot to do with the lack of defense, particularly in the interior for Mike Gray. He was pleased with the way his team is defending. And right now, it looks as though they're playing pretty good defense. The question is, can they continue to take care of the ball, continue to get the ball where they need to in distribution to continue to build this lead? Chris Thomas in and out. Rebounded on the baseline by Ronnie Jones. Milwaukee Jones penetrates.
penetrating. Oh, beautifully done. Jones with the soft touch. And that allows Milwaukee to set up their press. But this time it'll be broken easily as Thomas taxis it into the front court. That was token pressure. Again, the changing of the defense is Bruce Pearl continually trying to get Notre Dame off balance and out of rhythm. Dan Miller, jump shot in the lane, off the heel of the rim. Three-point lead for the Irish. No lead safe, though, against this Milwaukee team. Tucker, the banker. Boy, up until now, Clay Tucker very quiet. He's usually the catalyst. Make things happen on the offensive end, and he is an all-conference defensive player as well. Maybe that'll light a fire under Clay Tucker. First basket of the second half, he has 11. Cornette inside, Francis. Cornette for three. And another missed shot by Notre Dame. Milwaukee can take the lead, and they do! Ronnie Jones, and once again, the Panthers have reeled in the Fighting Irish. Francis with the rebound, and there's a foul. A 10 0 run for Milwaukee in the last 225. Again, Bruce Pearl talks about his confidence in his team. They've been there before. Seniors who know time and score situations understand how to come back. Conversely, that last possession by Notre Dame, you had Joel, Jordan Cornette shooting a jump shot from beyond the three-point arc. That's not his shot. Just poor execution by Notre Dame, and that's allowed Wisconsin Milwaukee to get back. Thomas in the corner. Tough shot! Chris Thomas, 22. And the Irish are back on top. Timeout on the floor. Now, wait a minute. So there's no timeout. The referees stop play. And now they've just decided to let him play on. Thomas with the steal. Picks it up to the basket. Off the glass. Nobody fouled. Thomas just poking that ball away from Ronnie Jones. Well, Chris Thomas is taking it upon himself right now to start kicking his team in gear. Not only did he do it on the offensive end, now defensively, just picking his spot once again. A little swipe, knocks it loose, and hustles for the loose ball. Thomas at the line. First one is good. Chris Thomas, an excellent free throw shooter, 87% on the year. He's got 13 of his 23 points here in the second half. Make it 14. Sherin Francis heads out of the game. And Tom Timmerman replaces him. Irish back up by three. Under 10 to go. Thomas. Cole. That's a brick. Rebounded by... Chris Thomas makes that tucker. And what a screen in the backcourt by Timmerman. He laid out Jones. Dan Miller off the glass, high and in. Ronnie Jones got drilled. Tom Timmerman gets it. 7 0 Irish run. Well, it's Lettenberger that was guarding Cornette. He's got to be up screaming. Look out for the screen. Inside. And a whistle of foul. Tom Timmerman to 6'11. 260. We see the screen come up right there. Nobody around to call it. It's this man's responsibility. Lettenberger, he's got to get up there. And you can see it coming. You got to screen. Screen right. And here, Dan Miller. Finishes after that screen had leveled Ronnie Jones. Miller puts an exclamation point on it. Milky at the line misses the first free throw. Now he's the guy that you want to foul if you're the Irish. He's a 53% free throw shooter. And he gets the second. Here comes the sub. Page back in. 
And Milky goes to the bench. Thomas over the line. Down the lane. Running hook. Out of control there. See, that's what happens. Chris Thomas makes two or three good plays, and all of a sudden, Tucker comes down and drains a three. Now a timeout by the Irish. Back to Indy right after this. Clay Tucker starting to seal it now. Notre Dame by a point. Tucker has 14, had nine at halftime. Well, just as Chris Thomas has taken it upon himself in critical situations, Clay Tucker has to do the same for his team. He's got the same ability as a catalyst, as a distributor, to draw the defenses, to take their attention, and then make other people better after he's sunk a couple buckets. Here's Thomas in the backcourt. Milwaukee backs off. Winston follows him up the floor. And that time, Clay Tucker did a nice job of stepping up near his man, Dan Miller, and calling out the screen. Francis steps out, eight-foot jump shot, halfway down. Tucker with the rebound. He'll shoot it off the break. To the basket, nice bounce pass. Lettenberger stripped out of bounds. Again, Clay Tucker putting people in position where they can succeed. Right there, nice little bounce pass right under the basket. Lettenberger not able to finish, but that's the value of a Clay Tucker. Here's Tucker now, off the dribble, on the hop, ah. Rolls out and it goes out of bounds to Tucker. Frustrated with himself. He knew he had to step on Dan Miller. Eight minutes remaining, Notre Dame by a point. Miller can't get it in back. They turn it over. Lettenberger ends around it out. Oh, what a lost opportunity. Francis in the front court. He fouled. Man. Again, that pressure really starting to take its toll on Notre Dame. But Wisconsin-Milwaukee cannot capitalize. And when this one's over, if they're on the downside of the score, watching this take is going to give them heartache. 18 turnovers for Notre Dame. They average 17 on the season. We still have 7.51 to go. Karen Francis, first one good. The big fella has done a nice job at the free throw line tonight, six of seven. And on the season, he shoots 66%. 18 points, 11 boards. Second one good. Notre Dame as a team, 15 of 17 from the line. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow, we've got another great lineup of games for you. It all starts in Boston with Manhattan. Coached by Bobby Gonzalez, takes on Jim Beheim, Syracuse, Orangeman, Carmelo Anthony, one of the great freshmen in the country from Syracuse, ready to lead. 57-54, Clay Tucker in the corner, Page counted, and we're tied once again at 57. 15 points for Dylan Page. Well, it's nothing tricky that Wisconsin-Milwaukee's doing. They're just executing, penetrating kick, good old-fashioned basketball. We've had eight ties and six lead changes. In the corner, Thomas No rebounded Tucker. Milwaukee with numbers, nice bounce back, Frederick. Jump hook, blocked by Cornette, pushed out. Thomas has it, and he's tackled from behind. First down, Notre Dame. <laughs> Well, the biggest problem right here is the challenge. Jason Frederick shouldn't be challenging Jordan Cornette, who's a shot blocker. And then in an effort to hustle, you see the tackle right there. You got to kick that ball back outside and start all over again. There's no rush on that one. And Critical you, possession. And you tell me Tyrone Willingham wouldn't mind having a kid like that on his team. Which one? <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Diving for loose balls. Chris Thomas got caught from behind. <laughs> yeah, he certainly did. Well, that's a big blow for Wisconsin-Milwaukee to have Jose Winston out. 
tremendous defender. He was one of those harassers out there, a guy who was just a flying the ointment for Notre Dame. But Chris Thomas at the line. Sinks the first free throw. He's six of seven. Notre Dame, what a job from the strike. 16 of 18 as a team. Well, that's their strength. 76% on the year as a team, free throw shooting. That's up there among the nation's leaders. 59-57. Chris Pearl exhorting his team to get the ball to Tucker. Tucker a little long. The rebound going to Chris Thomas. Don't forget the winner here will play Illinois. And that is the fifth rebound for Chris Thomas. What a potential matchup. D Brown versus Chris Thomas. Thomas, the crossover runner. Got his own rebound. Snatches it. Deals it. Cornette draws the foul. Young fellow making it happen, isn't he? Wow, yeah, he certainly is. Got the heart of a lion. Chris Thomas at six feet. And he has to do that because he's got to erase mistakes. Now, I don't think that was the greatest shot selection right there. But again, with his talent, his athleticism, with his perseverance, he's going to erase that mistake. Lettenberger checks out of the game. Milky replaces him. Second free throw off the mark for Cornette. Notre Dame and Milwaukee standing toe to toe. This entire ball game, every time the Irish try to run away with this one, the Panthers from Milwaukee reel them right back in. And they certainly do. They've been able to do it with guts and with grit. They're playing good defense, turning Notre Dame over just like they did right there. Tucker to the basket, lays it up and in. And they've been doing it at the critical times, too. Just when Notre Dame thinks that they've created some distance, here come the Panthers. 16 points for Clay Tucker. Thomas knocked away. Who wants it? Tied up the possession error. Oh, they got a timeout. Ronnie Jones. The 59 Notre Dame, great job by Ronnie Jones calling the timeout. And this time it was a good one because the possession arrow pointed towards Notre Dame. So you want to burn that timeout, possession is vital. Mike Bray asking for a loose ball foul or something. Anything but a timeout. 19 turnovers for Notre Dame. Here's Page. Jump hook. Loose ball over the back coming up against Milwaukee. That one a little flat coming out of Dylan's palm. And he picks up the foul. Third foul on Dylan Page. And look at Bruce Pearl. He's about sweated out of that shirt. He's got a bad knee. He said he needs knee replacement. But uh, he's needed it for about 10 years, but he can never find the time. Look at the, look at the perspiration on his collar, though. He's working. Won a Division II title at Southern Indiana. Francis gets the first. Tuesday on CBS, joint superstar Celine Dion when she teams up with the creative genius behind Cirque du Soleil for a spectacular all-new live special. Justin Timberlake hosts Celine in Vegas Opening night live Tuesday on CBS. Two more free throws for Corinne Francis. Nine of ten tonight. 62-59, Notre Dame. Back door, Tucker! <laughs> 62-61. Blake Tucker exploding in the second half. He has 18 points. And the Irish lead by one. 
Miller spinning. Fire. That hit. Well, that's been his catch shot. Every time it's a need situation, Dan Miller's going to drive. A little spin in the paint. Tapped around. Rebounded by Milwaukee. Page. Tucker off the dribble. Bounce pass. Jones. Quick release. For Ronnie Jones, they say he's 5'9", but he's in there battling among the trees. Now Thomas to the basket. He can't get it over the lip of the rim. Milwaukee can take the lead right here. Let's see if they try to isolate Tucker. Tucker and Page have been forces. Tucker posting up. Goes baseline, stripped out of bounds. 4-0-1 to go in the second half. Notre Dame holding on to a one-point lead, and they have really been battling all evening. Well, they certainly have had to because the Wisconsin-Milwaukee Panthers have been scratching and clawing. Every time it looks as though Notre Dame's about to pull away, a key offensive rebound, a key steal, and Wisconsin-Milwaukee is back in the ballgame. That was trickling off for Ronnie Jones. Cornette with the rebound. And here comes Chris Thomas. Sophomore playing in his hometown of Indianapolis. He's 3-0 on this court as a prep player. And he's proud of the fact that he's undefeated. Wants to leave Indy undefeated. In and out dribble. In the corner, Cornette for three. That's a big shot. Jordan Cornette, 5 of 12 from the three-point line this season. Knocks down maybe the biggest shot of his young career. Only a sophomore. The Irish go up 67-63. Seven sixty-three. the score a look at the stat of the game free throw shooting Notre Dame 20 of 23 15 of 20 for Milwaukee get complete tournament stats at cbssportsline.com Ronnie Jones backs it up again another situation where Wisconsin Milwaukee has to find a wide open one let me burger it Ronnie Jones created a penetration into the paint. And Lettenberger just waiting, itching. 67-66. What a game here in Indy. Thomas bottled up and fouled. Wow. Wow. Well, this has been a physical ball game, particularly when guys are going after the ball. And yeah, I guess it was. Somewhat on the wrist, but in a trap situation, first of all, Chris Thomas cannot catch the ball in that corner. He's got to find a way to get more towards the middle in that open floor, and his teammates have to present themselves. They're standing there watching, waiting for Thomas to deliver some magic. And Thomas misses the first. The seven of nine tonight. Bruce Pearl still positive. He knows his team has the ability to come back at any time. They've shown it twice tonight. 68-66. Two minutes to play. We join Gus Johnson and Len Elmore. 58 remaining in the second half. Milwaukee has Notre Dame on the rope up by one. And it's been a battle of wills. Who can execute on the offensive end? Who can play the defense and string together a bunch of stops on the defensive end? Up and down all evening. Here's Quinn. Looking for Thomas. Nine to shoot. Cornette. Miller, six to shoot. Miller fires. And air ball right out of bounds. Wisconsin Milwaukee took the lead on this three here. It was all about execution. Clay Tucker. Best player on Wisconsin Milwaukee drives baseline, draws the defenders to an open Jason Frederick. And that's what we mean by execution. The team that executes flawlessly gets themselves in a position for a good shot or gets to the free throw line down the stretch will be victorious. Here's Tucker along with Lettenberger. 
Ronnie Jones, Jason Frederick, and Dylan Bain. Of course, you got to make the free throw, which we've seen is not a gimme or a lock throughout today. Here's the pick and roll, Jones, the five to shoot, inside, Page. Oh, it spins out. And the rebound. And they call it a jump ball, the possession arrow favors Notre Dame with 53.8 to go. Wow. The winner of this game will take on the Fighting Illini on Saturday. Chris Thomas. 27 points playing in his hometown of Indianapolis crossover dribble down the lane dumps it down Cornette straight catch can't get it to go Francis is there he lays it up and in and the Irish reclaim the lead 30 seconds left shot clock turned off Bruce Pearl right now is not going to call a timeout. He's going to let the clock run down. He's going to give it to their best player, Clay Tucker, the creator, and see what happens. We yeah. talked about defense. One stop is all Notre Dame needs. One basket is what Tucker needs. Eight to go. High drum in Indy. Tucker down the lane. Lays it up. Pays. Oh, he hits the layup. Holy mackerel. Everything worked. Bruce Pearl put it in the hands of his best player. Wanted him to create for himself or someone else. You can't get any better than this. Oh, my. Another look once again. Tucker going to his left. Francis come, defenders. And Dylan Page, that's the second layup he's missed in the last 54 seconds. And Chris Thomas may have gotten a hand on it. But here's the winning basket. Torrent Francis working hard inside. Well, he certainly was, and he's done that all evening. Torrent Francis, 23 points, 14 rebounds. An inside presence Notre Dame sorely needed. Notre Dame survives and advances. 70 to 69, and that sets up one of the great point guard matchups of the tournament, G. Brown versus Chris Thomas on Saturday. Our Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game, Clay Tucker, a senior, 18.7 rebounds, so unselfish down the stretch. You have to credit that young man. And Chris Thomas, 27 and eight. Notre Dame wins. Coming up after this, Greg Gumbel in New York. Like with the team, just looking.